We need to warn you that this story has graphic language and disturbing content and may not be suitable for minors. <laughs> well, I had a client, uh, and, and um, it was alleged that he like invited students up to his house. He was like giving them blowjobs. So he was putting a knife to the kid's head to give the kids blowjobs? To give the kids to give him a blowjob. Yeah, so he was forcing the kids to give him a blowjob with right. a knife. Right, that's what the charges were. Um, I had the teacher take a lie detector test, okay? He passed the lie detector test. This is why I don't believe in lie detector tests. So I advised him, you know, he's going to, with all of this circumstantial evidence that they can identify the house, the name of his parrot. And, but you didn't tell the them that, like, you know. No, I can't. I'm a, it's like attorney client. I can't tell them what oh I know. Oh my God. But he, does he still teach or? No, he resigned. He resigned. But if he wanted to, he still could. Uh, he's not registered as a sex offender? No, because he wasn't convicted. He resigned. What go now to a scandal sparked by a group known as Project Veritas. In this case is so upsetting to the police chief. It's not just the teacher's alleged behavior. It's also the self-described muckraker who sponsored the sting. I have, bl I have blow at the house. Like, whatever, anybody, <laughs> whatever anybody wants. Blow, of course, common word for cocaine. Everybody's like, wow, such a hypocrite because... If he's doing drugs, why are you preaching to us? Fucking tell anybody anything. All right. And if I have to hit you in the back of the, hit him in the back of the head, we'll be done. You don't okay. tell anybody. I'll give you the first shot. You've done this with students. I've done this more than once, and I said, but I guarantee you, I will kick your fucking ass. If the kid never comes forward, that's not proper. Okay, so leave it like that. I'm trying to maybe to come forward. Okay. Mitchell Rubenstein is the senior counsel for New York State United Teachers. Our journalist met him in December of 2015 at a holiday party for the union. Right, um, you represent the teachers who like have sex with the kids and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The but, tenured teachers who can't get fired, who like are like giving the kids blowjobs in class yes, and things yes, like that. Yes, yes, basically. That's it. But you read about in the paper. But but I don't. But that's not all our cases. I mean, that's what you read about in the New York Post. But yeah, but you rep and then it's all true. <laughs> Most of it's true. The What's the craziest the one that you've heard, though, that's like, where they were definitely guilty, where they are still teaching, where you're like, that guy's, or that girl's like a total scumbag and you shouldn't be teaching. I've had a lot of them. Really? What's the craziest one? What's the craziest one where, like, the craziest scumbag teacher who, like, you drive by the school and you're like, ew, like, there's a pedophile teaching there. There's a druggie teaching there. Well, I had a client, um, it was alleged that he like invited students up to his house. Oh, okay. Was he a principal? No, was a teacher. Oh, teacher. Elementary school teacher? Uh, it was a junior high school teacher. Oh. Okay, and he invited students up to his house. He was like giving them blowjobs and stuff like male. Oh, so he was gay. I don't know if he was gay, but it was male. I, I, he was I giving know. male, t male. It was, it was mostly. It was, it was a male, male teacher you know, giving male. And the charges jobs. were that they brought him up that because this is what the students reported. They like took a knife to hit to their neck that they he had. He did. This is what he was charged with, that he had to take a knife to their head to give him a blowjob, okay? So he was putting a knife to the kid's head to give the kids blowjobs? To the kids to give him a blowjob. Yeah, so he was forcing the kids to give him a blowjob with right. a knife. Right, that's what the charges were. Oh my God, it's like rape, but... Rubenstein works for the Teachers Union in New York City. As a union lawyer, he defends teachers, no matter how reprehensible their crimes. You were asking me what the worst I ever had was. So bad. Okay. The story shocked us, but it got worse because Rubenstein told us the teacher got away with his outrageous sexual assault with little more than a slap on the wrist. Ew. It is so bad, and there was and, and there were several allegations like that, and so it was the kid's word against the teacher's word, and. Um, um, I had the teacher take a lie detector test, okay? He passed the lie detector test. This is why I don't believe in lie detector tests, okay? And I said to him, Mike, why, how did you, like, pass what the was, lie? What's his name? His name was Mike, okay? I don't even remember his last name, but, okay? But it was like, how do you pass the lie detector test? And he said, every time they asked me, like, that I forced to have sex with the kid, it, was, it, it wasn't forceful, it was voluntary. So he, in his mind, believed that it was okay, because it was because it, it was voluntary, when it really wasn't voluntary. Oh. Okay. I so mean, they it was were like alleging, psychological. Okay. Yeah. But that's how he passed the lie detector test because he kept saying no, because they were asking, did you did you force to have sex with a kid? And the answer was no, 
and that was in his mind <coughs> technically true, although legally That's when you're gross. that young you can't you can't have that. Oh my God. So anyway, you know, he pa he passes the lie detector test and then um, so students he actually had a student come in and, and testify against him and then um, the student says you know, he has a parrot, his parrot his name is Petey. And he says, Okay, Mike, how do the students know your your, your parrot is Petey? Okay, and he says Oh, easy, you know, kids like pets. I use pets like as a, you know, motivation in, in teaching and everything. So I tell them, I'm, you know, my, my, my pet is Petey. So they, you know, I use Petey as, you know, as part of the, okay. And, you know, we go on and on. And, and then the students, um, they have your phone number. This is your cell number. They tell, you know, I, I get discovery from them. So the students are saying, this is your cell number. How do they have your cell number? Okay. But you were defending the teacher. I'm always defending the teacher. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So how do they have your cell number? We get discovery. So the students, you know, saying we get this, we have the cell number. How do the students have your cell number? Oh, I know I shouldn't give it to them, but you know, I help them after school with tutoring and stuff. So I get, so I give them my cell number. Okay. And then it gets, then, then one of the students describes his living room. It says like he has, I don't know, you know, brown couch, and he has like a, you know, a picture of a ship on his wall or, you know, something. It says, okay, Mike, do you have a brown couch and do you have a, a picture of your ship on, you know, on the wall? Is yeah, I tell students I have this, and some of the students they they, they drop stuff they, they drop stuff off for me, okay, and I'm, and I'm, you know yeah this is pretty bad you know they're you know they're in the house well but they you know but but they drop but they drop stuff off for me and he's in complete denial I remember and he he passes this lie detector test and I go to him dude you know you're gonna go to jail if this goes bad because this is like forced sex with like a minor this is like his word you know as 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 bad as you get. So then, he didn't know this, but they um, they subpoenaed his phone records, and the, believe it or not, don't ask me how this is, but the kid, who's a high school kid, um, called his girlfriend from Mike's house. So uh, Mike's phone number had the girlfriend's phone number, and it says, Mike, now how did I have the girl's phone number, you know, on, 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 you know, on your house? And at that time... He broke down, he admitted he had a problem, and he resigned, thank God. And um, He admitted he had a problem as an IT force. He admitted to me. Oh. So I advised him, you know, he's going to, with all of this circumstantial evidence, that they can identify the house, the name of his parrot. But and, you didn't the tell them that, like, you know. No, I can't. I'm a, it's like attorney client. I can't tell him what oh I Oh, my know. God. But he does he still teach, or? No, he resigned. He resigned. But if he wanted to, he still could. Uh, he's not registered as a sex offender? No, because he wasn't convicted. He resigned. That's it. Resigned. A teacher was found to be forcing students to perform oral sex on him at the point of a knife, and all that happens is he is forced to resign. He resigned. But, doesn't the, but the union knows about this stuff, right? Like, they know, like, well, that these people... I'm the people... union. I'm representing him, and, um, so, um... Wow. But you asked me about the worst. That's the worst. That's the worst. That's the worst that I've had. So this guy, but... The story shocked and sickened us. We decided we needed to find this Mike to try and confirm the story and to make sure he was no longer a threat to children. Obviously something the New York Union and Mr. Rubenstein didn't seem to care about. We quickly determined we needed more information. We had another journalist arrange another meeting with union lawyer Rubenstein. One of my first cases, I had a guy who um, was alleged, he was a junior high school teacher, and he was alleged to um, forcibly, he was a, a male teacher, male student, of all sex with male students. Okay, he's alleged to have done it by force. Like by knife point and by gun. By gun? By gun and by knife point. These are the charges, okay? Okay. And? Rubenstein repeated the story, further convincing us of its veracity. Okay. We go through discovery. You get like documents and things. Yeah. So I say, how do these students have your phone number? The first mistake you teach them. Well, I'm helping them with the homework. You know, the difficult things. Okay, I have that one. Okay. 
He says you have a parrot by the name of Petey. How does he know your parrot? Do you have a parrot by the name of Petey? He goes, yeah, I have a parrot by the name of Petey. He actually admitted to it. Oh. That, that he did it. And then, and there's one step I left out. Um, I had him take a lie detector test. Okay. And he so, so similar. It's okay. crazy, though. Okay. He asked the lie detector test. Okay, and... Um, but he did it. And I said to him, how do you pass the lie detector test? And then he said to me, this is why they're not reliable. He said because it was voluntary. He was having voluntary oral sex. And, and he kept in his mind that the charges were saying that it was like a gun or a knife to the, to the, to the kid's throat. So he said to me, every time that the polygraph examiner said to him, are oh, you doing this? He said, I wasn't doing this, it was voluntary. You know, the kid, you know, it, was, it, it, it wasn't involuntary. He was like reading in to it that it was involuntary. And, you know, I think the kids to protect his, I don't know, manhood or whatever, told the investigators, made up a story about the gun and the knife, but they had sex anyway. You, you know, you can't. Like actual sex. Um, well, Man on man. Yeah. Okay, so maybe they had sex. I don't know where you want to go. But, um, so that's what. So he was guilty and he passed the lie detector test. And I told him, hey, you can't go to trial. You're going to wind up in jail. Yeah. And um, I actually convinced him to resign. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was a, to go to trial is a crazy thing. And he resigned. Pretty bad. pretty bad? We think horrific. We needed to find out more. Was this in New York? Yes. Was this in the city? Yes. Where? Where? You have to tell me because I'm not getting that so similar to my husband. I don't even remember where. I couldn't tell you. Okay, come on. You're I, a I, know, I, re- I know. I really don't remember where. I mean, it's this is this is how long ago. 20 years? Was it, was it in Manhattan? I don't even remember. You know, we, 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 this is your I remember it was a UFT. UFT is, is citywide, so it's all five boroughs, but yeah. nice and statewide. Yeah. But I mostly work in the city. So this it was somewhere in the city. Yeah, I couldn't tell you where. I want to say it was around Penn Station, around here actually. I want to say that because, believe it or not, about two years later, yeah. I ran into him in the street. So he was still living in New York? Look at this. He was running for city council, handing out flyers. Oh, oh my god, what was his name? I can't tell you his name. He didn't win. It's like college. When you run, then you have to run in like certain... The primary? Precincts? Yeah, I don't remember. I, I don't even know. I would love to... Like, you think he's running right now? Oh, like, no, no. Office? What do you think he's doing? I, I haven't seen his name in a while. You can't even remember his name. No, but I haven't seen him. I haven't seen his name in anything, you know. But you said you don't even remember his name. I don't remember his name, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen him. I'll tell you his first name. His first name is Mike. What's his name, Mike? Was it? No, no, it wasn't. I never met a before. You have it. Well, there's a couple of us in the team. Okay, all right. All right. That is So you know his last name. I don't get it. Why can't you tell me?
I couldn't tell you what it was. It could be 92, 93, or anything. Yeah, a long time ago. But if you don't tell me his name, but you give me a really strong hint. <laughs> Rubenstein didn't give us any more, but we were determined to find this Mike. We have hired two different private investigation firms to locate Mike. We consulted with a ranking officer of a New York suburban police force, and we did extensive research on our own. We checked court records and election files for names of city council candidates. Unfortunately, we hit a brick wall. We need your help to solve this mystery. We want to find Mike and make sure he is not a threat to our children. A very disturbing sex crime has been committed against a child, and the system prevents that crime from ever being brought to light, let alone the perpetrators ever being brought to justice. Are the teachers' unions so powerful that they can protect, cover up, and condone a crime committed against our children while in their care? Are the rights of the teachers' union members so absolute that it can supersede the rights of a child not to be forced to have sex while a knife is pointed? at his throat. What type of country are we living in where people are attacked and vilified for promoting reform by the media when the media should be exposing these atrocities to begin with? Perhaps as one columnist put it, people inside the system have lost their minds as well as their souls.